Hey, welcome to another video. So in this video I'm trying to make dibenzyl diene acetone and I start by adding 12 grams of acetone, so about 17 milliliters or a bit more to a beaker and then I add 42 grams of benzaldehyde. This is not actually the amount that is shown in the literature but try to get as close as possible because my scale is broken. To a larger beaker I first add 200 milliliters of 5% sodium hydroxide solution and to this I add 160 milliliters of alcohol. So in this case I did add the alcohol first and the sodium hydroxide now. So during this preparation I decided to follow literature but it turned out that literature was not 100% perfect in the whole synthesis so I'll show you later what happened. Then I add all components together and finally I add a stir bar put everything on my homemade DIY hot plate stirrer plate I made last week and stirred it until the stir bar got stuck and then filtered it and washed it three times. Here you see it after the third wash. So it should be clear water underneath. Then I place it on the stir bar again after I removed it from the filter and add 300 milliliters of isopropanol to recrystallize it. At least the literature says that I should use isopropyl alcohol and recrystallize, recrystallize it with it, but this does not seem to work out. So the basic idea behind recrystallization is that you get rid of the contaminations. So what are the contaminations that are mostly water, acetone, alcohol and benzaldehyde? and sodium hydroxide. Unfortunately everything including the sodium hydroxide is going to dissolve into the isopropyl alcohol and there I get a nice solution of everything and while I was trying to recrystallize the isopropyl alcohol did not quite work well, so everything came out of solution, including the sodium hydroxide, which I wanted to remove before because all the other stuff you don't have to remove. And to crush it out, I use ice water, and this did not seem to work pretty well. So the yield is about five percent or something, because only a very tiny amount came out of the isopropyl alcohol in recrystallization and this really did not seem to work. Maybe I was not patient enough. So the only purpose of this recrystallization therefore is to remove excess sodium hydroxide that is left after the washings and you really want to get rid of it. And here you see what I got from the recrystallization and all the red stuff I pulled out is basically lost dibenzyldiene acetone and I add ice water to crush it out of the isopropyl alcohol and recover it later. And I found out that dissolving everything in acetone is basically the best approach because it leaves behind the sodium hydroxide undissolved, you see it's blurry here, and you can easily filter it through. Then you get a nice clear solution of only water, acetone, men's other height and your product. I don't repeat the name, it's simply too long. And everything except your product will evaporate if you dry it in the sun, because all these substances have a considerable vapor pressure. Here you see some crystals forming at the end and 
it looks just amazing how it starts to crystallize while the acetone is evaporating. And this should be enough for the moment, but I'll recover the other bit as well. So thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed and see you next time.